Hi, I'm Phil, that's me on the front, and on the back is my partner Joe. We're sitting on our Pride and Joy, an Orbit Velocity electric tandem. It's a touring bike with low crossbars, both front and rear, allowing for easy on and off. Suffice to say, it's all quality stuff. Big discs and a third V-brake, strong wheels and 11 gears that really do cover the full range. Then there's the motor, a 250 watt Shimano Steps E8000 integrated into the frame with the 504 watt hour battery sitting on the squared off down tube above. Nothing revolutionary, nothing fancy, it just works. But we made a few changes. First to go were the 700 by 32 tyres. We spend more time off-road than on, so these were swapped for chunkier 700 by 42s. That's about as big as the frame will allow, even after we ditched the original mud guards. Next, well I suppose it's an age thing really, but we both got bad backs and prefer an upright seating position. That meant raising the handlebars. Up front, it's pretty comfy in standard spec, but I lifted the bar slightly with an adjustable stem. Joe's more serious back problems demanded more desperate measures, including, believe it or not, a third set of handlebars behind the seat. It's not the safest way of holding on, but on quiet roads, it really does seem to help her. So, why did we choose the Orbit Velocity? There were two others we looked at, the Gapida Thorus and the Mustache Samdi. With me at 5 foot 8 and Joe at 5 foot 10, the frame size of the Gapida was a difficult fit for us. The moustache, well, it looks great, but the price ruled it out. So the decision was made, an orbit velocity at just over £4,000. And 1,600 miles later, I can report that the Shimano Steps E8000 motor has been flawless. The way it delivers its power is perfect. Drop down the gears and you can feel the assistance level rise. There's no drama, no overheating, just a little motor whine and your own virtual Bradley Wiggins propels you up the hills. There really is very little that this bike cannot tackle, even with a couple of old age pensioners on board like us. One of our regular routes is to a beach near Robin Hood's Bay in North Yorkshire. We used to push our old tandem back up the hill to Ravenscar, but not anymore. Joe and I are both in our 60s. I've got arthritis, I need a new knee. We're not the fittest cyclists out there, but any fear of hills has gone. Okay, brilliant as it is, the orbit velocity isn't perfect. There are several advantages integrating the motor at the front rather than the rear, but there is also a disadvantage. The front and rear cranks aren't locked in sync. This might appeal to those of us at the front who like to have a rest every now and again, and it might well confuse those onlookers who are about to shout, Oi! She's not pedalling on the back! but pedalling hard and out of sync can feel a little lumpy. That might bother some people, but it needn't bother them for long, because with a brief pause, a bit of coordination, and that means right leg down for us, sync can be restored in the blink of an eye. There are a couple of other things worth mentioning. 
I wish the pedals didn't need to go round when I'm using walk assist mode and the battery indicator isn't all that accurate. The first indicated 50% lasts an awful lot longer than the second 50%. The big question for e-bikes is always range. And the big answer is always, well, it depends. And it does. Powering up the 1 in 3 hill from Robin Hood's Bay to Ravenscar on boost used an indicated 20% of the battery. It's a rise of around 800 feet in not much more than a mile. If you could find a hill long and steep enough, you could flatten the battery in less than 10 miles. In the real world, even in the Scottish Highlands, with sensible usage, the battery has proved perfectly adequate for our 50 mile day trips. And if we wanted to be less sensible with the usage, we could buy or even hire a second battery. They're small enough to fit in a standard saddlebag, or you can buy a special battery bag that hangs on your rear crossbar. Even if you do misjudge it, even if you do exhaust your battery, no worries. This bike pedals like an ordinary tandem. The motorisation adds around a stone to its weight, but there's no drag or resistance, and you'll barely notice it. On the flat roads of Holderness to the east of Hull, We've ridden 112 miles in a day and still had power to spare, largely because we only use the motor to combat headwinds on the return leg. We take our orbit velocity everywhere. Carrying it on the car roof is no problem. And if I pop off the saddles and front wheel, it even fits neatly into the garage of our caravan. There really is no better way to explore the countryside than by tandem. With an electric tandem, you can go faster and further than ever before. Our saddlebags are always weighed down with big cameras, binoculars, food, drink, coats, and a whole load of other random stuff, but we can still pedal up pretty much any hill we come across. We've taken this bike to places that would break lesser bikes, places we shouldn't really have been, and yet the Shimano Steps motor has not missed a beat. On paper, the Shimano Steps E8000 is no more powerful than other e-bike motors. But it's the intelligent way that it delivers its power that makes the difference. You'll get very little help as you approach the 15 mile an hour limit, but as you start dropping down the gears for the hills, the motor really starts kicking in. Even the base eco mode will get you up slopes you would normally walk up while trail and boost modes will leave those expensive, lightweight road bikes eating dust. Well, at least until you get to the top anyway. Our Orbit Velocity e-bike has proved to be safe, strong and fast. The Shimano motor is a gem. Heading for the hills has never been so much fun. <laughs>